Hi guys, so today we're looking at an assortment of items from Stargazer. So, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this brand at all, um, but when I was younger and hanging out in Glasgow, the alternative shops sold Stargazer. They had crazy colours of eyeshadow, they had loads of glitters, they had glitter liner, glitter hair glitter, um, coloured liners, crazy coloured lipsticks, the full shebang and the white foundation. The white foundation and the black lipstick is like cult stargazer products in my world. Um, and lipsticks. So obviously with lockdown I've not even been in shops much lately uh, but even then it's been a long time since I was in a shop that sold stargazer and I was looking at their website because there was one product I'd been excited about and I thought you know what we're going to do this. We're going to try and go for a full-ish face of Stargazer and see how it works out because I never see people talking about this. So their stuff is pretty affordable. I've got my invoice here. I mean, I, I bought their nail polish for nostalgia purely. Um, I remember it being good anyway, but we're not testing that today because I broke one of my nails. But their gel effect nail polish is like three fifty. The eyeshadows are £4 each um, and you get 3.5 grams. Um, they obviously don't really spend money on making packaging fancy. You don't need that, so who cares? We got these Geochrome Flakies. These are 8 50 This is an expensive product for Stargazer. Um, we got a Pro Foundation. Um, and that was four pounds for a foundation, um, and thirty mils, so fairly normal size. Blusher three fifty, slightly nicer packaging than the eyeshadow, still three and a half grams. And I got I got a primer, which is interesting. So this was listed as a cream primer. And now that I've read it more closely, it's actually meant to be for um, for pressed powders. Although the instructions do say for your makeup, put on your foundation. So whatever, we've tried it anyway. Um, but that was three f no five pounds for six grams. And then I grabbed a couple of lipsticks. They are three fifty each. They have the cheapest looking packaging that looks like kitty makeup um, but I still just picked one up actually I picked three up I was aiming for a nude shade the colours online weren't as clear um, as as they would be ideally um, so let's see how we got on right so this stuff only arrived yesterday and I'm already like impatient to be using it there weren't any eye primers, so I'm just using the NYX Proof It primer. Um, so there's a couple of things that I, you know, didn't buy, so we've got not quite a full face, but we'll deal with them as we as we encounter them. Um, so probably could have done this off camera, but I just wanted to get talking. So, first things first, you know I normally use my Makeup Obsession Pearl eyeshadow that's like a, a creamy, a pale creamy shade. Um, well that's running out, it's not really running out, it's hit pan, and they don't do it anymore. And they had this shade called Translucent, which I'm hoping might be my substitute. And I just dropped my, my Ricky Mirror palette thing, which is, oh I broke a shadow that time. Whoops. Okay, I'll tidy that up later. So, anyway, I've got my usual big fluffy brush. This looks a tiny bit more yellow, but I'm not sure that it's going to matter once it's on, kind of thing. Um, oh, maybe it does. Oh, it does. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, you can definitely see that as a, a colour rather than, um, yeah. Okay, maybe bad plan, but we're going to have to do it on both sides because we've done it now. 
and then I'm going to grab an actual pale eyeshadow <laughs> and go over it. Maybe I should have got the white one. Maybe the, that with the white mixed together would have been like the answer. Um, sorry, I've just got an Inglot one in here that's pale, so <laughs> balancing that out. So, sadly, rather than looking more pale once it was on and sheared out, it looked more yellow. So we still get a little bit of yellow, but it's not drastic, it's fine. Um, we do still have another one of the pressed shadows to try out, so don't worry about that. This is the shade Purple. Um, it reminds me a little bit of Makeup Forever, back when they were cruelty free. <laughs> Had a colour called 92, this looks a lot like that. Maybe a tiny bit pinker but not much, so I'm sure I had a fluffy blending brush out as well. Where did you go? Right, we're using this one anyway. Angled blending brush and we're just gonna get that into the crease. We're gonna see how dark this is. Um, I never bought the black shadow even though that would have been kind of almost cult classic for Stargazer. Um, but yeah, I've got too many black shadows, so if this is dark enough on its own, that's fine. If it needs deepening up, we're going to get a little bit of just another black eyeshadow. So. so, pretty pigmented. Um, it's not blending too great, but matte purple is one of the harder ones. I'm going to grab my fluffy blending brush, so two seconds. Okay, found it. I had brought it over. I just had missed it. So we're going to go in with that first. Dee, dee, dee. See if that gives us better control. Or not. <laughs> that kind of feels like we're doing nothing. Is this going to end up a total bust? That's going to be gutting. Really? Wow. Okay. We're going in hard. And that's how we had to go. <laughs> right. That's crazy. Kind of feel like I'm hurting my eye. Um, I'm not going to lie, that doesn't feel like something that's good for me to blend that hard. So I'm going to do some more um, tapping and spreading out on this side in the hopes that that will help. I don't remember their stuff being this bad. Wow. I mean, maybe if I was just packing this on the lid as a colour, it would be fine. But trying to get this into my crease? Whew, I'm not amused. Look how hard, like, ugh. Look how hard I'm having to blend. That is we will persevere, we will persevere. Try again with a fluffy brush, see if we can get anything. Doubt it. I mean, it's a nice shade. Yeah, that's all I can say for it. This is so hard. I'm thinking back, I used to have an eyeshadow from them, but now that I'm thinking about it, it was a loose one, uh, like a loose pigment rather than a pressed shadow. So maybe that's why I had a more positive thought in my head about their shadows. Um, maybe the shimmery ones are better, I didn't grab any of those, but shimmers tend to be a little bit easier to work with so yeah okay I, I definitely think I want a little bit more black in to define the 
crease area so I'm going to grab a tiny little bit of black it doesn't want to open it doesn't want to play with the other eyeshadows it's heard me saying it right so just in the very tip of my brush I'm gonna just put a little bit of shadowing in there Luffy Bush. I'm hoping the next eye product just like rescues this um, because the next one's one that I am excited about. I was excited about all of this, but this is one that I'd actually seen on another site and I'm like, oh, I want to buy that, I want to buy that, I want to buy that. And then when I decided I was doing this kind of like bigger haul thing. It had to come with me because it is their Duochrome Flakes. Da, 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 da. So this is the shade Blue Purple. Um, open. So doo -doo -doo, doesn't want to come out. I got it. So, it's in a cute wee diamondy jar. It's so shiny and. Please God, this saves the day. So it's sealed, which is always nice to see. Although, I hope I don't spill anything taking this off. Oh, it's pinging places. Right, because it's all on the inside of the seal. I'm just going to pop that in the lid and we're just going to work off of that seal. So look at that. Look at the Joe Comey. Um, although, I'm seeing a lot of red in there. Anyway. I'm excited! It does look really chunky. It's not really picking up off the seal. Oh well, let's see what happens. Well. Finger instead. That's better. Okay. Finger is the way forward. But even then, this is a bit pants. This is a bit of a disaster. Um, be right back. I'm going to try and wipe this off. I think this might have to go on top of a shadow rather than being its own product. Right so I'm back and I just took this H&M Easy on the eye colour, it's just like a cream shadow stick um, and used that as a base um, on the remainder of my lid so that we can try these flakies again. So they really are quite chunky, um, which is probably why there's no sifter because they wouldn't fit through one. Um, Oh yeah, okay. That's the business. Oh my god, if these stay on looking like that, this is like a geode or something. How cool is that? Oh my god, I'm going out the park with a dog today. <laughs> People think... I'm nuts. Or I imagine people think I'm nuts. Nobody said anything like, you know, why do you have crazy glitzy makeup when you're just out walking your dog? Every so often my mom says, like, you know, you'll, maybe you'll meet someone when you're out with a dog. And I'm like, anyone who meets me when I'm out with a dog probably thinks she's mental and high maintenance. She's got glittery makeup on to go up the park. Um, but okay, yeah, over, over the black shadow this has totally redeemed things and I don't think the camera is picking up half as cool as it is in real life. So now I've got to try and clear up the fallout from this which is um, <laughs> probably going to be fun. Um, just making sure that's closed as tightly as I can. Oh god I can see this on my lashes. Ooh. Um, <laughs> Pray for me. Um, ok, 
okay that came off okay because it's chunky yay I'm just gonna quickly clean my lashes before I forget right I'm wiping my hands on my jammy bottoms okay don't judge me so I'd already done my skincare and stuff before this video so we can get straight into the face makeup we have got a pressed cream powder I'm sure they really mean it's a pore cream powder rather than pressed but whatever um, so I'm going to do half my face with this and half my face with my um, Revolution Niacinamide primer drops because I kind of want to see how the foundation works as well um, and I don't want it to be affected by a strange primer so I don't know why I just put this on the left of my face I normally put Revolution on the right because I like my letters to match I'm sad um, but whatever we'll remember and if I don't remember I'll watch this back. So let's have a look at this guy. So it looks pretty waxy. Um, I mean, not much for you guys to see, even if it would focus. Go on, try it, you can do it. It can't even focus on it, it's that weird. Um, yeah, so it just looks like wax. Um, doesn't smell of anything, just feels like a kind of greasy bam, which is a bit worrying as an oily skinned person. Um, but it says it's a silky colourless silky colourless primer that's suitable for all skin tones, reduces shine while optimising the look of lines and imperfections, evens the skin tone, leaving a matte finish, creating a perfect canvas for your foundation, meaning your makeup stays put all day. Apply a thin layer alone or under makeup. So, we'll zoom out. We'll try it. We'll see how it makes my skin look on its own. Because this guy, I think, makes my skin look a bit nicer anyway. So, um, we're just going to use the sponge that comes with it because I've never had a creamy, waxy primer like this before. It literally just looks like I've got like Vaseline or something on a makeup sponge. Um, I was about to use the mirror but it's got like a, a seal stuck to it and I've got a flaky and more flaky. Oh my god, I thought they were gone. Right. <laughs> I can't lie, it still feels like putting a like Vaseline on my face. Oh, it feels nice and powdery though. Okay. Applying it feels greasy and slimy. Touching it after it's applied, smooth and powdery. So that's it. That is interesting. That's if any, if nothing else, this is a cool, interesting product. Mm. Yeah, my pores definitely look filled in. Ooh wee. Da -da, da -da, da. So like I always thought the nice anime one done a nice job of smoothing things out just a little bit. But this guy. This is exciting. Uh, so that's two products in a row that have been exciting. Oh. I'm just gonna put um a little bit more on my chin. I get some pores there. And I have no objection to them being equally filled in. So, we also grabbed the foundation. There wasn't a huge range of shades. There was a white one, which I'm beginning to think I should have got just as a mixer. But this is in the shade Translucent, which is weird, because to me Translucent means see-through. Um, not what I want from my foundation. Um, but it's in a little pump. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping this is a match. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Might be a little bit pale, but that's my preference. Anyway, I'd rather have a foundation that was a bit too pale than one that was too dark or too yellow. So, um, it's looking nice and thick. I don't think I needed half as much foundation as I've just squirted out. Because this is spreading. <laughs> 
so it's not the highest coverage um, well, I'm pretty sure on the bottle it says Stargazer Pro Foundation is designed to give perfect coverage and results every time for a shade that is long lasting. The hy hypoallergenic, although they wrote hypoallergenic formulation, allows a light and even shading with little, little effort. Apply the shade lightly, then build up layers if a heavier result is required. A single heavy layer will be more difficult to control than a well built shade base. Right, okay. So. They want it to be built up in thin layers rather than whack on a heavy foundation. That's fair. If that's the instructions, that's what we're going to do. So, takes a bit more time. Um, I didn't see any concealers on the website. I don't remember them being existent when I was younger either. Um, I don't think I've ever seen them about the shops. So... Um, I mean, I'm not loving the foundation. It's a bit slippy. Like, I feel like there's places that I'm putting it and it's shifting away again. So, take a wee breather, give it a wee fan, see if it'll set it down a bit, and then we'll try for a second layer. Let's see how that goes. There were powders, I didn't actually get any. Um, I think I've just got way, 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 way too much powder. Um, and I'm too in love with RCME. So the powders were the same sort of shade names and things as well. Um, like they had a powder named translucent, so I'm sitting thinking, are you a translucent powder? Or are you a powder that's the same shade as either the translucent eyeshadow or the translucent foundation? Because <laughs> that's confusing. Um, don't use words that have meanings relating to makeup as a shade name for makeup. That's strange. I mean, if you were shopping in person, it probably wouldn't be as inconvenient. But looking on the website, it was just a little bit weird. This is looking slightly better, but not great. Um, I'm definitely going in with my concealer. And we're going to try and redeem my skin. Um, we'll see the... The Revolution side looks slightly better up close. Um, I'll zoom you guys in so you can see what I'm trying to talk about with this foundation. Um, so that looks slightly better than this side. But look, it's just kind of like shifting around a lot whenever I try and like build it up. Um and that's not ideal. My forehead is just kind of bleh. Um I'm gonna get another layer going on basically and see how that goes. And keep my fingers crossed. <laughs> Now look at the brush strokes that are coming up in this and I'm trying to layer it now. Right, time to abandon the foundation ship and go in with concealer and stuff. So it'll be two minutes doing this and I'll be right back. Right, I'm back. I relied rather heavily on my concealer. Um, put on quite a bit of powder. <laughs> I've done my contour because I, I did buy a blusher and looking at the website I couldn't tell from the picture if it was matte and dark and potentially a blusher, uh, sorry, potentially a contour or if it was going to be a blusher. So I just found out this morning it's definitely a blusher. Done my brows because they did have brow pencils but it's hard to go wrong with a brow pencil so I didn't want to review that. So blusher wise we've got shade 5 um, and it looks like a this, but it didn't look quite as peachy online, it looked a bit more brown and you couldn't see the sheen. Oh, this kicks off a lot of powder. But this is the thing that's going to turn out to be um, really pigmented after me whacking my brush into it like that. That's From tapping it off it looks pretty pigmented. Yeah. 
also looks like a lot of it is filled up with shimmer. Whoops daisies. So pigmented, shimmery. Uh, be careful. If you like a matte blush, it's not for you. I was gonna put on a highlight, but I almost feel like I don't have to now. It's like how that catches the light, like Okay. Yeah, um, sell that down just a little bit. So there was actually a lot of lipstick finishes um, listed on the website, so I ended up with three of them. Again, they all looked um, a little bit different online because they all looked very nude, but in fact I've got two um, that are far more pink than I expected. So I've got a matte lipstick. I'm sure these were labelled, yeah, lipstick and fresh lipstick. So I think we're just going to go with the, the matte one. Um, for some reason the fresh one is the only one with the traditional billet shape. These other ones are really pointy. Um, and yeah, cheap packaging. But that's fine. Um, if it really bothered you, I guess you could buy a nice tube online and decant it. Um, feels a bit rattly, but whatever. So, oh, it, sm oh, it smells like crayons. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> that looks awful. It's so sheer, but it's also sitting in lines and things. <laughs> How awful is that look? Like? Yeah, try and build it up. It also looks pretty shiny for a matte. Um, okay. We'll be brave and try the less pink of the pink ones. <laughs> but with the smell and this overall look, I might just ditch the the lippy side of this review. Right. So if if Andy was interested, that was shade 209 in the matte. I'm even trying to achieve now. Um, so I will say that the the tube is shiny on the non matte one. So there is some design for in the packaging. Okay, this is at least a slightly nicer formula. Slightly. Still, still smells like crayons. Well, that's a shade. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's let's give it kind of like the benefit of the doubt, right? So it is at least pigmented, even if it's not a great color. Uh, it's creamy enough. It's creamier than the matte one. Got quite a lot of coverage for, yeah, covering my own lip color, but it's still still sitting in lines and looking a bit chalky. So I, I don't even think I can wear this. I can I can still smell it. 
Um, so I feel really bad because I should at least do a wear test out of it because the shade, there's other shades that would be better, I hope, I imagine. Um, I'm just going to swatch the other one just for, for nosiness. But there's, I love makeup and there's zero enjoyment in these lip products at the moment. Um, also smells like crayons. It's been like slightly mangled. And is a bit of a Barbie pink. So, um, whew, right. I will at least film the intro with this on and then see don't even want to. No, this is coming off. It's five past eleven. We'll still see how the blusher still looks crazy at the back. The blusher and the eyes are pretty much all that we're testing at this stage. It's the foundation. I've pretty much covered it up with concealer. So yeah, um, I'll be back. We'll see how this goes. Right, so we're back for a check-in. So from a distance, everything looks okay. We're a bit shiny. Um, the foundation, of course, I did kind of cheat and cover everything with concealer, so yeah. But the time now is five to seven. Can we see? Yes. So it's been on for eight hours. So a couple of things that I want you to chat about. Blusher is still looking nice, still looking sheeny. It's definitely a winner. Uh, it's, it's really pigmented, but also really shiny. Anyway, so, foundation wise, um, we do have a fair bit of oil breaking through, but what I wanted to draw attention to was the pore filling magic is still there. So, this primer might be like magic unsung hero. Because look how smooth that looks compared to that, and I don't know where the spot erupted from. Ignore it. The eyes, well, we've got some creasing just in there. Um, let's use the and see at this side. But it's not drastic. Um, but to be honest with you, I'd already made my call that those eyeshadows are going in the bin. That pigment was just the non blendability. Sorry, the pigment was fine, it was non blendability. Maybe if I wanted just to pack it across my lid, it would be fine. But for anything with your crease, just was a bad experience. So I am going to keep wearing this. I definitely want to try the primer out with a nicer foundation. Um, but what I'm going to do just now is just reset all my oily, splodgy bits. And yes, I'm a total cheat for not using the lip products. But there was just... No. 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 I think one of those shades might look nice on some people, but the matte one, just... The consistency and the finish and the smell on all of them, just no. Um, but we will continue. We'll see what happens. I haven't noticed much in the way of fallout from the flakies. Although whether that says more about the the H and M product than anything else, I don't know. And one thing that I forgot to mention, which I thought was so awesome with this order, is this beat the vid gift <laughs> spray moisturising hand sanitizer. I just thought that was such a nice touch. Um, with everything that we're going through just now. So anything to encourage good habits and keeping your hands as clean as possible to spread as few germs as possible. But yeah, my, my makeup looks fine. It looks nice. Um, bit patchy down the centre of my nose. And on my chin, even now that it's been powdered again. But yeah, the foundation, I'm pretty sure already I'm on that. Mm. No. It does say it's for normal and dry skin, so it's not really aimed at me. But the issues with blending it and trying to build it up and going patchy, I think would happen whatever my skin type was. So I'm already happy to say, nah, not so much about that. The eyeshadows, yeah, I think if you were just using them on your lid, you'd probably be okay. But 
there's nicer ones out there that are also affordable, so we're gonna no with that. But, um, yeah, if the blusher gets going, it'll be a good one. So definitely gonna hang about for the rest of the day with this on, and come back tomorrow and try the primer with my dose of colors foundation. That's my current go-to favorite, and we might still get a few winners out of this. Right, so we're back for another quick check-in. It's half eleven, so this had another four, four and a bit hours. Um, oil's breaking back through again. Just gonna zoom you in and show you. It maybe looks slightly less bad on the stargazer side, actually, and we're definitely still looking smoother pore-wise on this side. What I would say is I've had two big white heads erupting today. Um, that used to happen to me with MAC foundation. I had like an intolerance or something in that. Got a big one in there and a big one in there. I am thinking there's a slight chance that it's the foundation um, because, you know, we used that all over where we only used the primer on this side and we used the other one on this side. So, yeah, that's possibly another thing. If you have a sensitivity to MAC foundations, this may well have a similar formula. On, so that's the last time I got big ass spots like this. Although, looking at it, third ingredient down hydrogenated coconut oil. Yeah, possibly not the best thing because that's a little bit comedogenic pore blocking, as far as I remember. So, at the moment, I'm going to go and wash my face quite thoroughly and I'm going to retry this guy tomorrow with my normal foundation and we'll see what the final outcome is. But the sparklies on the eyes, loving them. The blusher, still strong, still loving it. So we'll just give this its own day and see how we feel about it. Right, so I'm back. As you can probably tell, I haven't touched up my makeup today. It is 10 o'clock and I was all finished my makeup and downstairs and dressed but 10 o'clock this morning. So this has been on for over 12 hours. So the Stargazer Primer is on the left side of my face. I almost got that wrong. And Revolution is on the right. And we use my normal Dose of Colours foundation today. So let's zoom in, see what we're left with. Do -do -do -do. And yes, I've had a runny nose today, so we're just going to ignore that there's zero foundation from here down. Okay? Cool. Agreed. So, Revolution side, Stargazer side. Um, I'd say we're pretty even um, on the oil control front. Maybe a smidgen less on the Stargazer side. I have to say they're both looking pretty smooth today as well. So possibly the foundation yesterday was just settling into my pores and making them look worse. And yeah, my forehead's pretty even on the wear and things as well. So I think possibly the fact that the foundation had coconut oil in it, which is something that can be quite pore blocking. It might have been why my pores looked bad yesterday, but I'm just theorising. I am not an expert on ingredients, dermatology, the chemistry side of makeup. I just know what I can see. So, out of everything that I bought, I'm still going to say the primer is good, okay? It's performing just as well as my Revolution Niacinamide one, and I love that. So. This, definitely all good. I'll be interested to see how long it would last because I've never really dealt with a solid primer before. Um, I should probably try putting it on with a brush as well. I just keep using a sponge because it's there. Um, so yeah, that is a win. The blusher I didn't use it again today just because it didn't seem to go as well with what I was doing the rest of my makeup, but it's a win. The flakies, they're a little bit expensive, but my god, they are so pretty when you've got a good base on. So they are a win. And the losing side, we've got 
the lipsticks and the foundation and I've decided the eyeshadows are just going in. I mean, like I keep saying, yeah, you'd probably be fine using those eyeshadows, just packing them on your lids if you weren't having to blend. But there's other eyeshadows out there that are probably the same price range, possibly even cheaper, that blend a lot better. So for that reason, they're in the goodbye pile rather than the goodbye pile, which is quite small, but perfectly formed. So if you've got any questions about any of these, pop them down below. If you've got any other brands that are kind of like throwback for years ago that seem to have been forgotten but are cruelty free, let me know. I'd be happy to do this again. It was quite fun for all that things were not great. <laughs> um, I, I honestly just enjoy this kind of flashback type feeling. So yeah, if you've liked this video, click the like button. It helps me out. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!